Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're at 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 1 to 8. Let's read it, then we'll think about it together. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance? When you have departed from me today, you will find two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin at Zelza, and they will say to you, The donkeys which you went to look for have been found, and now your father has ceased caring about the donkeys and is worrying about you, saying, What shall I do about my son? Then you shall go on forward from there and come to the terebinth tree of Tabor. There are three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you, one carrying three young goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive from their hands. After that, you shall come to the hill of God, where the Philistine garrison is, and it will happen when you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a stringed instrument, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them, and they will be prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. And let it be that when these signs come to you, that you do as the occasion demands, for God is with you. You shall go down before me to Gilgal, and surely I will come down to you to offer burnt offerings and make sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days you shall wait till I come to you and show you what you should do. So Samuel has gotten Saul off to the side here. He's giving him the word. You're going to be anointed king over Israel. Saul is still quite surprised by this. So what do we get here? We get some kind of interesting business going on. You're going to get this many loaves of bread. You're going to meet this guy here. You're going to meet that thing there. There's kind of a series of things that are going to happen. Samuel is telling Saul the future step by step, the things that are going to happen right along the way, so that so that Saul will understand that this is supernatural. This is something that God is doing. God is working, and he can foretell the future because he sees the future. He's, he's giving Saul some signs to help him believe and understand that God is going to work for him and be with him. Another thing that's quite interesting here is this business about uh, him prophesying and being turned into another man. Now, that sounds a little, a little ominous, doesn't it? But, you know, when we are connected with God, uh, he helps us be our true self. Saul would still be Saul. He's going to get this sign. He's going to be prophesying with these uh, prophets, and that's going to be another marker in his spiritual experience, another indication that, Saul, I'm with you. I'm God. I'm with you. That's the kind of thing that God is doing for Saul. Interesting business here about how God is, is taking steps, spiritual steps, to encourage Saul to trust him, steps to help Saul know that this isn't just a, a strange thing that, that Samuel's doing. This is something that God is doing. God has ways of working for us. Now, we're not told anything really here about the prophecy in this or any following text. So there isn't really anything. That's not a point that the Bible writer dwells on. So I don't think that's an important point for us. The important thing is that God came to Saul and God gave him a very important sign to show him that he would be for him. What about us? What do we draw from this? Well, God is providentially working, and sometimes he gives us signs. Many times, though, he, he doesn't give us such uh, clear signs as this. Uh, but we shouldn't need a lot of clear signs. Uh, what we should be is trusting in God, trusting in him. He'll, he'll take us along. So we simply trust in him and go on forward. But it may be that on some occasion, he may uh, choose to give us signs. And when we see those signs, we should take them seriously as helps from God to help us have faith in him. Saul, going to be king. God is doing some stuff to help him tune up. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that you have heard the prayer of your people, even though we understand that prayer was not your best will for them. You are providing Saul to be their, the first king of Israel, the first human king. We pray that uh, you'll help us to see your providential leadings and help us to have faith even when you don't give us signs like that. Help us to know that you're on our side. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God is on his throne. He hasn't left. He never leaves. He's, he's always there working for us. May he help us to day by day live for him, trust in him, and see the steps he'd, that he would have us to take to be his servants in these bizarre times. God be with you today.